That's why I can speak with impunity about the Illuminati, because I know who you would have to be in order for what I'm saying to bother you, number one. I met Prince when I was 12. Where, where did you meet Prince when you were 12? At, in Dayton. Um, after really? he performed at UD Arena. Yeah, I mean, I knew him my whole life. He was like the guiding force for me. It's the reason that I, I, I had high self-esteem was because of him. Like. So, it's been like eight years since we lost the legendary Prince, but his beef with the music industry is still as hot as ever. Word on the street is that Prince's public battle with the big labels might have played a role in his tragic end. Now, his buddy Cat Williams is dropping some serious bombshells, hinting that maybe Prince's death wasn't just some accident like they say. Fans are buzzing about Jay-Z supposedly trying to pull a fast one on Prince, convincing him to hand over his music rights to Tidal, which ended up in a lawsuit between between Prince's estate and Rock Nation. And it seems like Cat Williams isn't buying the official story of Prince's death, hinting that he's got the receipts to back it up. Over the years, there's been tons of talk about the sudden deaths of music icons like Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston, and of course, Prince. All of them were vocal about their issues with the big record labels. Prince, especially, took some big steps to break free from their grip. Quick backstory, Prince got his start with Warner Music back in 77 when he was barely legal. His album 1999 blew up, and by 80 84, Purple Rain catapulted him to superstardom, but as Prince's fame grew, so did his desire for control. In 85, he said adios to Warner and launched his own label, Paisley Park Records. He had a string of hits, but things started souring with Warner in the 90s. They had a public spat over money and creative freedom, so Prince did what any rebel would do. He started showing up with Slave written on his face and even changed his name to a symbol. Prince wasn't alone in this fight. George Michael was battling Sony at the same time, calling it professional slavery. Record labels were sweating bullets, facing a PR nightmare. Prince couldn't fully ditch Warner, but he churned out albums like There Was No Tomorrow to fulfill his contract. He realized the music biz wasn't his jam anymore and wanted full control of his tunes. So he teamed up with EMI for that sweet, sweet freedom. Prince calling people out, but Prince wasn't one to keep quiet. He kept bashing big labels, saying they were useless. Instead, he preached about artists keeping their independence and working with different labels. And that's the story of Prince, a rebel with a cause and a whole Whole lot of funky beats. So there came a point where Prince just had it with the music biz. He even said he wished he'd picked a different career if he knew then what he knows now. He told the LA Times, if I can't do what I want to do, what am I? He felt like he was being held back, like a dreamer turned into a slave. He famously said, if you don't own your masters, your master owns you. In 2007, he went on the offensive against the internet giants, YouTube, eBay, and Piratey Bay for using his music without permission. Then there's the streaming saga. Prince yanked his music off all platforms except for Jay-Z's title. He gave title the exclusive rights to stream his album Hit and Run. But after Prince passed away in 2016, his estate went after Rock Nation, Jay-Z's company, saying title kept streaming Prince's music even though they only had permission for one album for a limited time. And Jay-Z didn't hesitate to boast about owning Prince's masters, even though Prince didn't leave them to title. Prince's death. It's eerie how things unfolded. Prince regained control of his masters from Warner Music on April 18th, 2014. Then, almost to the day, two years later on April 21st, 2016, he was found dead in his Paisley Park place. They called it an accidental overdose, saying he thought he was taking Vicodin for pain, but it turned out to be fake pills laced with fentanyl. Talk about a tragic twist. So, check it out. The cops in Minnesota dropped a load of pics and vids of prints right before he passed away. They just released it all like 10 gigabytes worth on the Carver County Sheriff's Office website. You probably remember Prince was found unresponsive in his place, Paisley Park, on April 21st, 2016. His death shook the nation, and everyone wanted to know what went down. They did a big investigation, but in the end, they didn't slap any charges on anyone for his accidental overdose. Turns out Prince thought he was popping Vicodin for pain, but it was actually some fake stuff laced with fentanyl. They're still scratching their heads about where he got those deadly pills from. The pics and vids they dropped don't really give us any answers. There's one pic from the day before he passed, chilling at his doctor office. And yeah, that doc had to cough up $30,000 for writing a prescription in someone else's name. Not cool. There are some other shots showing Prince's body on the floor near an elevator at Paisley Park. He was out cold, eyes shut, just lying there. The document also spills about Prince's inner circle, like his buddy Kirk Johnson, who noticed he wasn't looking too good. Kirk only figured out Prince was battling an opioid addiction when he passed out on a plane a week before he died. Then there's the wild ride to the hospital, where Prince woke up gasping after a shot of naloxone. 
He was feeling all fuzzy, saying someone gave him something to chill. But get this, Prince was super private about his stuff. Even his closest peeps were in the dark about his struggles. Kirk was baffled, wondering how Prince kept it all under wraps so well. Just like with Michael Jackson's death, there's a whole lot of doubt swirling around Prince's passing. Fans aren't buying the official story, thinking maybe someone slipped him some bad pills on purpose. Even folks in the industry, like Kanye West, are raising eyebrows. Kanye went as far as suggesting that both MJ and Prince were taken out, and he narrowly avoided the same fate. He even posted a pic of Prince with Slave on his face, saying it's time to rise up. You know why Prince gave me the song Jail? Because he liked what I did. And he's like, I like what you did with them contracts. You said Prince gave them to you. Right. Man, he right. definitely, guess who's going to jail tonight? You know what I'm saying? A Gemini you, spirit. You know why Prince? Cat and Prince now, Cat Williams is apparently gearing up for a bombshell interview, ready to drop some serious receipts. Rumor has it he's got the goods to show that Prince didn't just go down by accident. It was the big wigs in the industry pulling the strings. Cat and Prince were tight, like best buds. Remember that epic interview with Club Shay Shay? Cat just casually let slip that he and Prince were more than just pals. They were like brothers. And let me tell you, Shannon Sharp couldn't stop gushing about Prince's skills, playing all the instruments instruments, singing, dancing, the whole package. Kat just nodded along, totally vibing with the idea that Prince was a true original. He even spilled about their deep bond, chatting about everything from song lyrics to music, ladies, and even their love for cars. Yeah, apparently Prince's car collection was more than just a hobby. It was part of their journey together. They were totally on the same wavelength about the stuff that mattered. Music, women, and those sick rides. Kat even hinted at how they had each other's backs, especially when it came to dealing with the rough side of the music biz. So when Cat Williams starts hinting that he knows what really went down with Prince's passing, it's not just some random dude talking. This is someone who was right there in the mix, someone who shared more than a few laughs with the purple one himself. And get this, in a 2022 chat with Arsenio Hall, Cat let the cat out of the bag about how he was actually inspired by Prince and spent a solid five years trying his hand at rapping before diving into comedy. Turns out it all started with a chance run-in with Prince when Cat was just a kid in Dayton, Ohio. Prince was doing his thing at the University of Dayton Arena, and according to Cat, that meeting left a mark. He saw Prince as a mentor of sorts, even crediting him with boosting his self-confidence to the max. According to Cat, Prince is the reason he's got that swagger we all know and love, and in classic Cat Williams style, he dropped some serious knowledge about how Prince was always ahead of the game. Sure, we all know Prince was a musical genius, but Cat suggests he also taught him a thing or two about embracing his own uniqueness. But let's be real, the official explanation of Prince's death left us scratching our heads. The questions are still hanging there, thick as ever, and now some fans are connecting the dots between Kat's claim that Prince was always thinking ahead and the cryptic comments Prince made before his passing. There's talk suggesting that maybe Kat knew something Prince did, something shady, like a plot against him. You know how Prince was with those mysterious lines? And some folks think he might have given Kat a heads up. Nothing's confirmed yet, but word on the street is he's gonna spill about how Prince felt his life was on the line. Just like MJ, Prince supposedly told his buddies that once he got control of his master's back, he had a big old target on his back. As we delve deeper into the mysterious circumstances surrounding Prince's untimely demise, one thing becomes clear, there's more to this story than meets the eye. With Cat Williams dropping bombshells left and right, hinting at a darker truth behind Prince's passing, the spotlight shifts to Jay-Z amidst allegations of a sinister plot. As we await further revelations and brace ourselves for the shocking truths that may emerge, one thing is for certain, the legacy of Prince, the enigmatic genius, and the questions surrounding his tragic end will continue to captivate and intrigue us for years to come. Stay tuned as the saga unfolds and we uncover the secrets hidden within the music industry's shadows.